How's everybody doing, sir? I'm supposed to be the actual assistant course director, but unfortunately, well, fortunately, I should have paid my wife to look at a baby girl here last week. I've been on leave for a while. So I need to get a cry of mine. Uh, if I'm a little bit shy, it's because I haven't been getting the sleep that I normally get, but uh, I think I can get through this. What I want to do is uh, take a little bit of time to kind of explain to you uh, some of the things that we're involved with as far as total quality management. Um, I know for a fact that uh, this is one of the items that if you haven't heard or been involved in any of these discussions or, or quality improvement sessions, then it's, it's coming. Uh, the reason I say that is because uh, what they found, of course, with all the changes that are coming up in healthcare is that we can no longer survive in an atmosphere basically doing business as usual, and mainly because uh, business becomes more and more competitive as things change. And with that, uh, here at the Institute of Pathology, we also have to be in tune with what those changes are and try to keep up with that because what we found is that with the downsizing and so forth, uh, our jobs are literally uh, in jeopardy, more or less, if we can't compete with outside business. And then we become thrown into the playing field, if you will, of, of all the rest of the businesses and so forth. So this will apply whether you're in a civilian or military organization. My background uh, dealing with total quality management started uh, when I was at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. It was kind of uh, funny because a lot of the processes and things that we talked about during total quality management courses were basic management techniques, but they were kind of uh, refined, if you will, and, and brought into a new light and basically are centered towards uh, customer service. And for me, that was pretty natural to latch in on that. The organization I was with before, I uh, was a superintendent for the clinical hyperbaric laboratory. And uh, we got a chance to actually uh, use some of those things that I learned in the uh, process action team training and so forth and implemented them. And, and it worked fairly well because what we're talking about basically is the same industry, if you will, as you would maybe on the outside, such as some of the other big industries like automotive industries and maybe uh, department stores and so forth. And you can actually apply some of those same principles to healthcare. So within the department, and I'm just using these as examples, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, some definitions of total quality management, uh, quality assurance, quality improvement, and so forth. And then from there, we'll talk a little bit about why we're making these changes, and then take that into talking about specific things that we've done to change. And you probably take a little bit of notes on that uh, and maybe use some of this stuff when you get back, or if nothing else, at least keep it in mind, and then go and look for your own information on it probably best that you go out and do some research on your own if you're planning on getting involved in quality improvement. Okay, so we're trying to make the transition from quality assurance to quality improvement. The reason for that basically is quality assurance programs, even though they're put in place to make sure that we are basically maintaining a standard, they tend to be rather final. In other words, what you're doing is actually checking the work that you've done. And the problem with that, of course, as an industry, when you get a car that comes off of the line and then you have someone check it out at the end of the line, of course, you have to go back and fix whatever might have not come off right during that process. And that becomes costly, costly after a period of time. So why are we making this transition? Primarily budget cutbacks, downsizing in the military and civilian industries as well, competition from private businesses and so forth. Uh, the laboratory or the uh, pathology work has actually become very competitive over the last few years. And for survival, uh, we tend to think of ourselves at the Institute of Pathology as kind of like uh, real experts on what we do and so forth. Of course, with the transition of military people and so forth, sometimes you lose a little bit of that expertise. But we cannot afford to actually stay right where we're at and expect to stay the cream of the crop. Now some definitions. Uh, quality assurance, which basically is what's out there now. Uh, some of you may be making a transition into quality improvement. The process by which health care providers evaluate the quality and appropriateness of patient care and identify, study, and correct deficiencies in its delivery. Now if you look at that definition closely, it's actually finalized pretty much right there. In other words, we're basically satisfied as far as quality assurance is concerned once we are able to correct the deficiencies. Quality control, again, is pretty much along the same lines in that the means by which a laboratory product is made to conform to specific design specifications 
if you want your slides to come out a particular way each time, then your process has to be pretty much nailed down. The technicians have to be trained. And everybody has to be producing the same high quality work. And the big thing about quality control is usually it's somebody else that's responsible for doing it. So with quality improvement, what you want to do is maybe not necessarily kick out quality assurance or quality control, but back that up and make it a worker process as opposed to maybe a management process. And uh, this slide just basically pointing out that as uh, we look at quality control and quality assurance, Here's where all of the things that we do are developed, all of the problems and so forth come out, but yet these two programs basically focus on the results. And then once we find that there is a problem, we have to kick that back through the process in order to repair it. That's where the extra cost comes in. And quality management uh, basically is a system of managerial programs that emphasize the use of statistical and systematic quality improvement throughout all organizational management. So first of all, right here, you've taken that quality assurance, which like I mentioned is a management program. And quality management here may be a quality, excuse me, a management program, but you're including the workers. Where the rubber meets the road is what's important as input with any sort of a quality program. So quality improvement, a process that energizes the organizational commitment to achieve continuous improvement in all operational functions and maximum customer satisfaction. The last two words is what really drives a good quality program. If you haven't been able to satisfy your customers, then you haven't really done your job. Uh, think of the last time that you may have gone out to spend money, say, on a specific item, a large purchase, possibly a home, a motor vehicle, or maybe even some uh, health insurance. And if you haven't really been satisfied with that particular item, then you're more likely not going to spend your money yet. Again. So that's very important in any quality program. Continuous quality improvement or CQI is a philosophy and that's where it takes a little bit more than just saying okay I want to do a job each and every day and get it over with from day to day but the person actually absorbs the commitment to making sure that each and every product that they put out or each and every customer that they deal with is of the highest standards that they can possibly get at that particular time. It emphasizes teamwork, a commitment to continuous, measurable improvement, and trust and absolute attention to customer requirements. And don't worry about customer. And that's what you're ultimately trying to satisfy. And as we look at this particular program, so the total quality management, continuous quality improvement, we find that we're going to spend most of our time focusing on the processes that we do rather than the results. And it so happens that in dealing with a lot of the pathology uh, fields, uh, lab work and so forth, goes through a process. And just like industry, it's pretty easy to apply these principles if you have a very visible process. Some other areas in healthcare may not be so easy. Uh, one of the things that you may get involved with, uh, some of you, is actually not necessarily providing a uh, product, but a service to a particular person. And, uh, continuous quality improvement is also important here. Okay, some of the techniques that we've driven to improve here, developing customer mindedness, uh, first by knowing who our customers are. When you think of a customer, primarily the people that you think about is maybe who's at the end of that case that you may be processing at that particular time. Ultimately, we'll find out that we, are have, we have several other customers that are in line as this uh, product goes through the uh, process. What you want to do also is identify exactly what their needs and expectations are. The needs may be something like a correct diagnosis for that particular case, but their expectations might be something like within a time event or like yesterday, or 24-hour turnaround time. Those are the things that you might need to find out from your customers. 